practical penetration testing boot camp. Uh, we structured this to, to kind of provide some um, answers to frequently asked questions, as well as to give you an opportunity to, to get some experience with, with a lab that uh, you'll be seeing in the course if you decide to join us. Just really briefly, here is our agenda. Uh, we'll start by giving some uh, introductions of our Evolve security team who's joining us on the webinar tonight. Then I'll dive into these frequently asked questions. Um, they're really just there to help guide the conversation, uh, help you all understand a little bit better about what the bootcamp is and what you expect to get out of it. And then we'll dive into the lab um, to, to finish up the webinar for this evening. Let's start by introducing myself. My name is Michael Cook. I am the manager of security services here at Evolve Security. And I uh, have been helping to uh, create the content for the bootcamp. Also on the call with us today is Isaiah Arju, who is the senior security consultant at Evolve Security, or one of our senior security consultants. He is also an instructor of the practical penetration testing bootcamp. And we have uh, Lee Sop, who is um, our Associate Director of Operations at Evolve Security Academy. Um, she is going to be most capable of answering um, questions about the Evolve Security Academy itself, uh, while Isaiah and myself will be able to talk uh, more about the boot camp. Again, for those who are just joining, if you're interested in uh, joining in on the hands-on lab that we're going to be doing here at the end of the webinar, Please just uh, go to this form that I've just pasted in the group chat, uh, submit your email address. That will allow us to be able to email you directly instructions for accessing a dedicated Kali instance um, that you'll be using for that lab. All right. So what is the Practical Penetration Testing Bootcamp? So this is what we designed. Uh, we designed a, a five-week, very immersive, very hands-on training um, that's going to be uh, designed really to help anyone become a better cybersecurity professional. Right? We've geared this uh, to help anyone be able to understand better what a threat actor uh, is going to be doing to, to attack your network, right? Uh, I, I've taught similar courses in the past, and, and, and as we uh, are all seeking to become better cybersecurity professionals, I ask uh, all of my students, uh, you know, we've been teaching you a lot of policy, we've been teaching you, you, you know, you're familiar with a lot of uh, uh, audits and, and federal guidelines and, you know, PCII and whatnot, but all of that is just, uh, doesn't make as much sense. You know, we don't have as much background for it until you begin to understand exactly what an attacker does and be able to uh, execute those things yourself. You don't really get that context, the background uh, for why all of that matters. So if you're, we, we're trying to design this course really to help anybody who's interested in becoming a more, uh, a better cybersecurity professional be able to take this course, as well as those who are interested in diving into the offensive security um, field as a career. We uh, will have live instruction, um, hands-on training, uh, recorded lectures and labs, all of which was designed to help uh, you to be able to learn the material and be able to get your hands uh, uh, dirty and, and trying out the techniques and the tools that, we'll be uh, that you'll be learning during the the assessment. Um, we we were designed, designed the course uh, to be a difficult course, right? I mean, learning these tiny techniques requires us to begin to shift our way of thinking from from the way that you know from understanding the technologies well enough that we'll be able to manipulate them to begin to start thinking of things outside of the way a blue team does and begin to start thinking about them in the way a red team does requires a lot of of challenging experiences and just to drive you towards being able to, to shift your way of thinking to the way a, a hacker does. So I've been asked a lot as, as we've been talking about this boot camp, um, 
how does this compare to something like the OSCP, which stands for Offensive Security Certified Professional? It's offered by um, um, the Offensive Security um, Company. Uh, and it's a great certification, uh, and they have a course associated with it. And it is, uh, it has become the uh, hacker certification, right? When, we're, when I'm looking at uh, job resumes, um, those who have the Offensive Security Certified Professional certification, uh, their resumes, you know, float up to the top of the list for me because it's so practical, so very hands-on. The challenge with the OSCP is that when you run into issues, when you're in the lab and trying to learn the techniques that you've been taught and during their course, and you ask for help, the only response you'll get back is try harder, right? So you don't get any sort of guidance. And then you have on the opposite side of the spectrum some certifications that are just very um, book learning, right? Uh, are you capable of doing a test, right? If you can pass a test, then you get the certification. What we're aiming for is more of a middle ground. We want it to be a very hands-on experience, something where you can get that practical um, uh, experience to give you more uh, uh, exposure to the tools and techniques so that you can begin to develop those skills yourself. But you're, it's going to be instructor led the entire time. So when you do hit the wall and you're finding yourself super frustrated and you want to throw your computers out the window, you can reach out to an instructor and ask for some help and they'll be able to guide you along without giving you the answers, of course, right? Because we don't want to take away that experience. Um, but we aren't going to just tell you to try harder either. We don't mind helping walk you through the experience. Um, give you an example. I, uh, some of the students I've been working with recently, uh, we, uh, we get into the challenges, uh, the assignments that are part of, of the coursework. And they're telling me everything that they've tried and that they're just having no success. And what I usually do for them is I say, okay, well, let's take a step back for a moment. Let's take a look at your network mapping results and walk through line by line and tell me what that means. And usually we end up having these long discussions about uh, a technology and how it works, right? How, how does email work? You know, how does it get from point A to point B? And as we help them understand the technology better, uh, and then apply it to the challenge that they're currently working on, then things begin to click. And that's when they start to be able to move forward with these techniques and become a better cybersecurity professional. And all of a sudden, those challenges uh, that they were running into become just stepping stones to, to, to greater and, and uh, understanding. And, and now, as you know, as I'm walking through all these frequently asked questions, I am keeping an eye on the chat. If I'm not explaining something well enough, or if you want me to go a little bit further, let's go ahead and shoot a note in there and, and I can step back and, and, and address those questions as, as they come up. So another question I've been receiving a lot is, what will you get at the completion of the course? Well, besides a better understanding of how attackers do what they do, and besides becoming a better cybersecurity professional yourself, you're gonna be walking away from this course with the skill set that will enable you to join a penetration testing team and begin immediately providing value, if that's what you're interested in doing. If you're uh, a uh, sysadmin admin or a, a blue team member, when you leave this course, you'll have a better understanding of what you should expect from a penetration testing team that you may hire to test your network. We're not just te teaching you techniques that hackers use, but we're also going to be diving into report writing and how to manage an assessment and how do you arrange rules of engagement and when a mistake happens during the assessment how do you handle that so it's from from the very beginning from from when you first start talking to a customer and starting to establish the statement of work and rules of engagement all the way to the execution of the assessment itself and all the way to the delivery of the report at the end we're focusing on making sure that everybody who walks away from this course is capable, not only of being a pen tester if they so desire, but also understanding what a good penetration test looks like. I uh, frequently, I've seen, I should say, I've seen a lot of penetration test reports in my career so far. I mean, I, I've personally performed over 200 assessments. Uh, I have a lot of people who work for me and I've seen their reports. I've seen reports of other penetration testing companies. 
And it shocks me. It genuinely shocks me some of the things that I see show up in these reports. And I don't know if it's because penetration testers just have a, uh, an aversion to a report that it doesn't look like it has very many findings or, or what it is, but we want to make sure that anything that ends up in a penetration test report is actually providing value for our customers. We want to make sure that we're always looking to answer what I call the so what, right? It's, it's not enough to say that, okay, yes, you have a system that's exposed to the internet that allows us to use a publicly available exploit to get control of it. But if that you know, machine is in a closet somewhere and it doesn't connect to anything else, then the so what factor is you know, minimal. You know, it, doesn't, it didn't lead to any successful attack. It actually didn't compromise any of the business objectives of the organization. Um, but if it did lead you know, to another attack that allows to get a control of another computer, which eventually allowed us to get control to a database full of credit card information or customer information, then the so what factor becomes a lot bigger. And every time we write a report, every time we perform an assessment, we should always be looking towards answering that so what factor. And as you're going through this course, uh, you're going to be expected to write reports for every challenge that you complete. And I fully imagine, based on my experience, that everybody's first report is actually terrible, right? It doesn't matter how many times we try to explain uh, what good the report looks like. It's not until you actually get the experience of trying to write a report yourself that it actually finally starts to make sense. So everybody's first report is, is just awful. It's terrible, but will provide significant feedback, help you um, develop that report into something that you can be proud of and that actually works to provide value for your customers. And by the time you're finished with this course, with this boot camp, you'll be walking away with some world-class deliverables for customers so that you know what a good report is and so that you can provide those if you're so desire or if you're receiving them, you can you know, make it known what your expectations are. And of course, uh, if you do complete the boot camp, uh, and successfully pass the final exam, you will get a certificate of completion um, proving that you uh, have, have what it takes to, to get through uh, a tough boot camp like, like what, what we're putting together. So how is this going to be delivered? So this is an online boot camp, uh, meaning that uh, the content is going to be asynchronous. You can pull it up anytime that you want. If you want to dive into a lab, you'll be able to spin up a dedicated lab for yourself, um, be able to bang away at it at your leisure, and then it'll tear itself down, right? So this is all going to be delivered online. Now, there are going to be some live sessions um, set at a, uh, a time where the uh, instructor will be providing that live content. Um, but most of the content and all the labs are going to be delivered uh, through an online format. So what kind of machine or software do you need in order to be able to uh, be successfully a, a successful participant? You just need any computer with access to an internet and a, a browser, right? So as long as you have access to the internet on your computer, then you have everything that you need. The virtual machines that we'll be building as part of the labs that you'll be able to get access to, we'll have all of the tools and um, uh, exploits and everything else that you'll need to be able to be successful at completing your challenges. So what skills are going to be needed to be successful in this course? First, uh, we're trying to design this course, uh, we've designed this course to, so that anybody, regardless of your skill of tech or your technical ability, will be able to get some value out of the course. Now, those, of course, who have a background in uh, sysadmin work, networking, um, they're going to have an easier time than those who don't. Uh, we, so we do re recommend at least a basic of uh, TCP IP. The Linux command line is highly recommended as well. But if you don't have that experience, um, we're not going to bar you from joining the course, but you are going to have to put in a, uh, a lot more effort outside of class time to learn those skills you need to be able to keep uh, to do the, the tactics and techniques that we teach you and use the tools that we teach you. That being said, we do have some resources that we recommend that you can you know 
use to get started before you start the course. There's um, uh, a Network Plus study guide uh, by Mike Myers. There's the Red Team Field Manual, which has a lot of good uh, information, kind of a cheat sheet for how to use the terminal and how to execute commands in a Linux terminal, uh, as well as Windows uh, commands. Um, of course, if you have taken the or if you completed the Evolve Security Academy Bootcamp, um, or if you have a bachelor's or master's degree in information security, um, or you have any number of other technical certifications, all of those will help you be more prepared for this coursework and will reduce the amount of effort you have to put in to learn things that you uh, don't know yet. But we are trying to design it so that everybody can get something out of the course um, by the time you're done. How much time uh, is expected outside of the class time? Now, this is a tough question to answer, uh, mostly because it all depends on your past experience. Um, but we do have some guidelines, some, some time frames that we're aiming for. Uh, first, there's going to be two hours a week of watching a pre recorded lecture, right? We expect about eight hours a week of attending live online sessions. And then outside of that, you can expect anywhere from five to 10 hours a week. Uh, researching and digging deeper into the lab environments and attempting to complete the challenges. Uh, of course, if you have less experience, less technical background, you can expect to spend more than that 10 hours. Uh, if you uh, do have that technical background or if you've done penetration testing or, or vulnerability analysis in, in a past life, then you can you know, expect to be at the lower end of, of that five to 10 hours. Uh, I've had some students who who tell me that uh, you know they spent more time uh, on, in my class than they have ever you know any class ever in their uh, uh, careers or in their college careers or or, in, uh, uh, or whatever level of, of education that they're at, um, and but they always tell me you know by the end is that it, it was it was worth it right they, that they learned so much more from this course than they have from any others and that's really what we're aiming for in this boot camp as well now i've had this question asked to me a lot and so uh, uh this also is a little bit tricky to answer um the labs really are part of, or one of the most valuable parts of the course. And uh, we wanna make sure that everybody gets the full value out of those uh, labs. Uh, but uh, there is also a component of, of uh, a limited time frame, right? So if we, if you know that you're only going to be able to access the labs while you're in the boot camp or maybe a couple of weeks after, then we're, it's, it's a sense of holding your feet to the fire, right? Knowing that you have that limited access will push you and push our students to complete the challenges um, in, in, a time, in a timely manner. Uh, as well as this is a valuable content, right? a, a part of uh, the value of the course. So uh, we don't know exactly how long we're going to give students access to labs afterwards, but it's not going to be much longer than, than the boot camp itself. Uh, again, we're looking to, to help you, you know, that sense of accountability and making sure that you're driving forward and, and doing, keeping up with, with the schedule of the course um, as you're going through the boot camp. Uh, there was a question here uh, that asking if this is going to help prepare for the OSCP. The answer is yes. So a lot of the same tools, a lot of the same techniques um, uh, that we'll be teaching is also found in the Offensive Security Certified Professional Certification. Uh, again, uh, highlighting the difference here is that what we are providing is going to be instructor-led. Um, there's still gonna be a lot of self-discovery. You're gonna have to do a lot of learning and research that you're gonna have to do on your own, but we are, there to help you figure things out instead of just making you try harder. That being said, when you finish our course and you have all of that experience learning the offensive techniques that we've helped you to learn, um, diving into the offensive security certified professional will feel a lot more familiar to you. It won't be as much uh, of, a, of a heavy lift uh, for you. I can say uh, I have the offensive security certified professional um, certification myself and um, if any of you are interested in doing that, um, 
learning how to enumerate or to gather information about your targets is one of the most important skills that you can learn in this field, in the uh, offensive security field. And that's going to be the case for our course, and it's going to be the case for any certification you're going to take um, for, for penetration testing. Uh, another question that we've received a lot is, um, this is an online course, so how will our class communicate? You know, how can you work together uh, where appropriate? How can you communicate with the uh, instructors uh, when you have questions? Uh, we do have a Slack channel that we, everybody will be um, uh, invited to um, during the, 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 the time of the, the boot camp. Uh, there will also be um, email, right, as well as every week the live lecture period where you'll have uh, that direct access to an instructor um, during, during those periods. Uh, we've received this question a lot. If you are located in another country, can you still participate? Um, yes, right, this is an online um, course, online boot camp. Um, you do not have to be in the United States or in the Chicago area where our headquarters are. Um, but there will be, understand, you have to understand that there is gonna be that live instruction period. So regardless of your time zone, uh, it may be more or less difficult for you to be able to, to, uh, to join those live sessions, which is part of the, of the boot camp experience. So as long as you keep that in mind, there, there's no reason you couldn't join, um, even though you're, uh, you may be in another part of the world. Any advice on how you can make your case for getting your employer to sponsor your training? Um, again, I, we are really looking to structure this so that even if you're not interested in becoming a penetration tester, even if you're just a sysadmin, or if you're a security analyst, or you're an auditor uh, for your company, um, there is a lot of value in understanding how an attacker does what they do. Um, all of a sudden, the firewall policies that you've been setting up your entire career start to make a whole lot more sense. All of a sudden, the um, group policy prefaces uh, that you've been setting up for your Windows environment start to make a whole lot more sense. So as you are seeking to try to convince your employer that this is worthwhile for them to sponsor, to pay for you to, to go through this training, um, helping them see that, no, you're not trying to, to, to leave them and become a penetration tester, um, but rather that you're just trying to become a better cybersecurity professional and better understand um, the, the ways that attackers might be going after your organization. Um, really, and, and even knowing, you know, when you hire penetration testing companies, third-party penetration companies, knowing what you should expect from them, being able to actually guide uh, from the consumer side the way the penetration test goes. All of this is valuable um, information for your current uh, employer and um, all of this can I think is a, a successful way of trying to convince them to pay for for this training all right so getting down to the nitty-gritty um, how much is the course uh, we're um, charging thirty two hundred dollars for the the five-week boot camp uh, we are offering a 15 percent discount for any of you webinar attendees if you enroll by the 31st of July and we accept payment um, by check, credit card, or ACH. What is the process for enrolling? Uh, it is going to our website and uh, following the links for the registration form. Um, after you have registered, we'll be reaching out to you with any follow-up questions, making sure that the program meets your expectations. Uh, you'll be receiving an enrollment agreement, an invoice, and a link to submit your payment. Um, so to enroll and then secure your spot, you're going to sign that enrollment agreement and return via email, and then of course submit your payment. All right, so I am, we are now at the stage of the hands-on demo. Um, I'm going to get from my team the list of those who are participating. So I'm going to put you all on mute. Uh, mute. It's going to take me about five minutes to send everybody those instructions. So just uh, hang tight. If you have any other questions while we're getting that set up, just shoot it in the uh, group chat and I will um, come back and answer questions as appropriate. All right, those emails are starting to go out. You should start seeing them in your inboxes. 
That is, of course, assuming that the uh, appropriate sacrifices were made to the demo god this morning and everything goes smoothly. I'm not seeing any other questions in the group chat. So just as a heads up, as you're starting to receive these emails, the way we're gonna be running this demo is we're gonna be pairing up. So if you receive uh, an even number of uh, Poly Machine, uh, meaning uh, you're logging in with root six or root eight or root 10, et cetera, um, then you will be acting as one half of your partnership. If you received an odd number, then you'll be acting as the other half. Just for my sanity, if, um, if you have received that email, can you let me know if they're starting to roll in? Fantastic, thank you. We'll just give um, everybody another couple of minutes here to get access. As you're getting your machines, the first thing I'll have you type in is actually to verify that your own personal IP address. As you saw in your email, but a way to do that in the Kali Linux terminal is to type in the ifconfig command. Is that big enough for everybody? Should I make them a little bit bigger? Oh, I don't know if it's gonna let me. There we go. So if you type in ifconfig, you'll see your IP address, which is right here under the inet. All right, according to my email sending script, everybody should have had it sent to them. Now, whether your personal email server has received it and delivered it to you or not, I can't speak to that. All right, let's go ahead and dive into this. So again, if you are an even number, for example, 192.168.1.6, you logged in with root six, you're gonna be acting as one member of uh, the uh, partnership. And if you are the odd number, uh, so in this case, six and seven, um, eight and nine, you'll be the other member of the partnership. One of you is gonna be acting as the server, the other as the client. And of course, you're welcome to um, switch uh, and test these things um, if you so desire. So the tool that we're gonna be sharing with you today, just to give you your first experience, um, is that of Netcat, which has been called the TCP IP Swiss Army Knife. And the value of this tool, the real power of this tool, is its ability to be able to interact with the TCP IP protocols. And we can use it in a number of different ways from the from an attacker's perspective. 
So the very, very first technique I'm going to teach you using Netcat is that of a simple chat. We've already confirmed our, our IP address, I hope. So those of you who are the even numbers, we're going to be executing this command first. So that is netcat in the terminal. We got to call the tool that we're going to be using, and we use the, we call netcat in Kali by doing nc. Then we're going to be using the options listening verbosely on port lvp four 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 four, and then go ahead and hit enter and get that started. Those of you who are playing the client or the other side in this case you're going to be running this other command, netcat tac v. So you're going to hear me use some, some leet uh, hacker language, right? Actually, when I first started doing um, the penetration testing in the field, um, I uh, started listening to my colleagues who were on my team with me, and they were saying things like tac and whack, and, and I was just like, what are you guys saying? It's a whole different language. But now I'm in the know, right? So now I know that when I when when we're here when we hear TAC, it's actually the dash, right? And now you're all in the know as well, uh, so that so that all of us can go into these situations a little more prepared. So NC TAC V stands for verbose. We're going to be entering the IP address of our partner. In this case, I'm going to four one nine two one six eight one four. If you are number seven, you're going to be going dot one dot six. If you're number nine, you're going to be dot one, dot eight, and so forth. And we hit enter. And something, oh, I, for, I forgot the port. Four, 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 four. It's always the little thing. All right. There we go. Now, if I, we just established connection from one computer to another using Netcat. And all this is doing is allowing us to uh, send plain text across from each other. So if I type something over on, um, 1.4, it shows up on 1.5, and vice versa. Cool? I'll give everybody a couple of minutes to give that a try. If you want to switch roles, if you hit the control C, that will cancel the connection, closing your net cap connection, and allow you to start fresh. So if you're getting a connection refused, that means your partner likely doesn't have the listener up yet or that you don't have the right port. Um, so you wanna make sure that it's there. It's also possible that um, the person who has 1.14 either um, has left us or, or isn't caught up to us yet. Um, and so unfortunately, there's not much um, I can do. Uh, if you would like, I can open up my listener. You can connect to me, um, Chris, here. I'll, I'll go ahead and do that again. So I'm at 1.4. There we go. Very cool. All right, so this is just sending text. But there's limited use cases for that, right, if we're actually trying to perform a penetration test. So what else can we do using this tool? It is possible, since we're just sending data across the wire using Netcat, for us to also transfer files. So again, we're going to do um, a listener. So Netcat, listening verbosely on port 4444. And this time, I'm going to take whatever sent to me, and I'm going to pipe it into an output file. If you're playing the client, then let's create a text file, something that we can send to, to our partner. You can type whatever you want as plain text, and we can just pipe that into a text file. Once you have something in your text file, you can make sure that it's actually there by using the cat command. You see that the contents of the file. So we know there's something in the file. 
Now we're going to use the netcat command again. This time we're going to go very verbose by adding two Vs, connecting again to our um, partner and piping in our file. My partner at 1.22 just connected to me. Now, Netcat doesn't give us any progress bar, so we don't know, uh, you know how long it's going to take or if it's completed or not, but we, if we give it a sufficient amount of time, and this is just a text file, then um, we know that it got transferred. So I'm going to go ahead and cat the output file and see that whoever was at 1.22 is not very creative. They just sent me hello. But that's all right. We got the file. But you can think about this in terms of other things. What if we wanted to get something malicious up to a machine? Or what if we wanted to take something from that machine and transfer it back, whether it be database contents or passwords or anything else? Uh, you can begin to start to think of this in terms of a hacker and what um, the capabilities are. So let's take that to the next level. Now we're going to be setting up the listener again listening verbosely on port 4444. And this time, we're going to be passing something else. 192.168.1.4 over port 4444. This TAC E command says, uh, I want you to pipe through um, whatever comes next, right? And anything that gets sent to me, um, or anything that I send is going to be sent to this bin bash, and then it's going to take whatever is the outcome of, from that bin bash and send it back to the other server. So uh, let me make sure, let me get that started. Oh, what did I do wrong? 192.168.1.4. Oh, NV, that's what I did wrong. There we go. It's always the little things. Right? So this time, if you recall, my IP address is actually 192.168.1.4. But with this TAC E command, sending the bin bash, when I, connect, when I type in a command like ifconfig, I'm actually going to get the results back from the other machine, which means I now have control of that other machine. And if I wanted to do something like reboot it or um, uh, whatever, I could do that. It's as if I was sitting at that computer. So this is us now taking Netcat and realizing that, yes, we can send text across the wire. Yes, we can text files across the wire. But if we also send bin bash, we can send control of another computer across the wire. This is referred to as a reverse shell because we're asking somebody to connect back to us. Um, that typically works because firewalls will prevent us from connecting directly to our targets, but because firewalls are stateful, they'll allow somebody on the inside, the trusted inside, to reach out to an attacker and initiate a connection. And because it came from a trusted insider, they'll let all traffic go back and forth from there on out. So by using this netcat string, we've established this reverse shell and given the attacker, uh, in this case um, me, complete control of the second host. Pretty cool. But let's think about that for a moment and realize that most likely we're not going to convince somebody to type in this complicated netcat command to us, right? If we're trying to get them to uh, give us control of their computer. So what you typically see in phishing emails or um, other similar social engineering attacks is that attackers will generate a payload using some programming language or scripting language that will execute this same uh, reverse connection uh, without making somebody go to a terminal and type in a complicated command. So to set that up, you uh, on the server side again, we're gonna type in the same command. This is our listener is what we call it. Netcat listening verbosely on port 4444. On the client side, we're going to generate a payload. We can do that using a tool called MSF Venom, which is part of the Metasploit framework. We're going to choose our payload, 
In this case, I'm going to use the Python language. We have to tell it what host it's connecting to. That's the L host or listening host. And that is going to be 192.168.1.4. We also have to tell it the port that it's going to be connecting to. In this case, 4444. I should note here, I don't know why 4444 became the quintessential hacker port, right? This was, I don't know, somebody a long time ago decided that that's what it was going to be. At every training now ever for these hacker skills, they're always using the same port. So uh, I don't know, I'll carry on the tradition, right? So you can choose whatever port you want. Um, but 4444 has become the hacker port. Um, small tangent aside, uh, we're doing the raw format, and we're going to pipe that out to uh, the payload file. Takes it a moment. All right, it tells us that it was successful. We have a payload of size 393 bytes. Now, if we execute that just using the Python command and then type in the name of our file, it does the same thing as our netcat command. You see that I've just gotten myself the same connection over at my netcat listener. And again, if I type the ifconfig command, demonstrate that I have control of this host. To take that one step further, since I'm done with my demo, I'm going to go ahead and re reboot it just to prove that I do have control of it. And you can see it killed that other connection. All right, so that is my demo and the end of this webinar. Um, we had a couple of notes asking if this was um, going to be shared with all participants. Uh, we did record it. We're going to be sending that link out to everybody. So you can test this out on your own. Um, if you just set up a Kali instance as a virtual machine on your local machines, you can perform these same types of uh, commands on your own and really just kind of experiment more with Netcat and, and understand just its full potential um, in terms of a way a hack an attacker might use it. Uh, thank you all for joining us for this webinar. Uh, hopefully, uh, you're as excited for the pen testing boot camp as I am, and we will see you uh, come this fall when 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 the course begins. <laughs>